How much weed activity should I expect in my new landscape beds? And how do I control it? Okay, weeds are not a bad sign. When soil conditions are good, everything wants to grow. So don't let the weeds bother you too much, particularly with a new landscape. There's pre-emergent weed control that you can do. It's a granular material that you can spread into your beds. It basically creates a vapor barrier and prevents seed, basically any seed, grass seed, weed seed, or anything from germinating. It probably doesn't control 100% of seed activity, but it probably controls 75 to 85%. This is a good, handy way to be able to suppress a certain amount of weed activity and not harm your plants. Post-emergent weed control, which is basically Roundup or a herbicide that you spray on weeds, is also very effective. Weeds need to be up and actively growing in order for the Roundup to be impactful. Using a low pressure sprayer using Roundup can be very effective in targeting specifically the weeds that you want. Okay, so I have my Roundup sprayer here, I have gloves on. Make sure you're reading the label instructions on any herbicides or chemicals that you're using so you're being safe. The other thing you can do is how much pressure you put in your sprayer. So here we have, although it's a grass plant, it's an undesirable plant in this edging that we don't want. So if we're spraying like this, we're spraying a really broad area, okay? I only really need to get the chemical or the Roundup on the plant. I don't need it on everything else. So if I have too much pressure in my sprayer or the fan nozzle is too wide, I'm going to spray a broad area like this. And that's not really what I want to do. Okay, so what I've done now is I've reduced the pressure in the sprayer so I have uh, I can be much more targeted with the application of the herbicide. So you can see here, now it's just kind of dribbling out. It's easy for me to like be very targeted and specific about what I want to hit without worrying about getting it on everything else. So the amount of pressure you're putting in your sprayer has an impact on whether you're going to overspray and get other things. Actually, I want to do this one. So the other thing that is a common occurrence is having a weed, but having it relatively close to another desirable plant and you're trying to spray it with a herbicide and not spray the desirable plant. So again, having low pressure on your sprayer is critical in this situation, but also simple techniques. Like here we have a weed right next to this coral bells. We don't want to spray the coral bells, but we want to get the weed. I'll just move in here with my foot. I'll move the coral bells out of the way. I have my sprayer on low and I saturate this little weed right here. Okay. Just let my foot go like that. And now we've sprayed the weed and we haven't gotten anything else. Here's another indication here where we have a weed relatively close to the grass and I don't want to mess up the edge of the grass. So I can do this, protect that grass over here, dribble this one on here, relatively easy, let the grass go back. We've taken care of the weed and we haven't damaged anything else. Roundup is relatively safe around other plants. It won't harm your soils. The active ingredient effectively breaks down when it comes in contact with soil. It's why the farmer is using it. It's why Monsanto developed it for the farming industry. Sometimes what can happen though when you're spraying, just human error or the pressure is too high, is when we're trying to spray a weed and we spray like this and all of a sudden we missed, the wind blew, and we got Roundup now on the desirable plant as well as the undesirable plant. Don't let that bother you. It's relatively easy to fix. We just take the hose and we rinse it off. Again, it won't harm the soils. We rinse that Roundup off that plant. We saturate it down a little bit. Everything's fine. If I got round, if I, I might have washed the Roundup off the weed as well. If that's the case, you can just respray the weed. Okay, so it's relatively normal when spring comes out to have some dead branches or dead ends of branches. Whether it's on a tree like this or a small tree or a shrub or a perennial, very common. You go through winter, they drop off some stuff. So um, although this can look a little alarming, it really is fairly natural. And there's actually a fair amount of it on here. So when you see this kind of stuff in the spring, everything kind of leaves out. You have to let it all leaf out. You can, it becomes really obvious what's dead. And you just come in here and prune this little dead stuff off of here. Clean this up. The plant can regenerate new growth. Those dead ends will eventually fall off of the tree by themselves, but it certainly looks physically better to take them off yourself. And they'll generate new growth faster if you clip this stuff off. So just get a pruner, 
plot your fingers, clip away, and you're never going to hurt anything by taking off something dead. Uh, if the shape ends up being distorted a little bit because there's a, uh, something you pruned off, um, but if it's dead, there's not really not a whole lot you can do about it anyway. So you really need to take the little dead stuff off. So this is really normal. Um, There's a little bit more on this one than maybe what we'd like to see, but it's a self-defense mechanism for a plant. You know, if they don't have the root system or the energy to support all of the responsibilities it has with branches and leaves, it's a self-defense defense mechanism for them to have some parts of it die off and then they, they relieve themselves of that responsibility and overall it's better for the entire plant for them to drop off a limb or two or have some of this rather than try and support everything and then um, uh, and then weakens the whole plant so we'll go over to this tree over here it's a little bit larger tree and it has some as well in it so this is a shade tree here and it's just beginning to leaf out so you can start to see it here, but we see a limb right up in here. This one's dead here. So we'll reach up in there and clip that off. If we can. Let's take that dead limb out of there. Here's another one on the end here. Take that one off. Another one here. Another one here. Take those little dead limbs off. One's here. Uh, there's another one up there that I can't reach with this pruner, but I otherwise I'd get out a ladder or a little pole pruner and take those off. So it won't hurt anything. It's perfectly normal for them to shed some of that, and uh, it should start to be expected, partic particularly in the first year or two when things are getting themselves established.